I'm trying to make this quick, Brandon. I'm You're making sorry. it difficult for okay. me. Uh, Go ahead and start. I'll <laughs> stop. All right, I'll start. I, I would like to welcome uh, my producing partners here. This is Brandon Smith, who wrote and directed the film Somewhere in Montana, along with Eden Bryant. Uh, she produced the hell out of this movie, I got to say, and uh, I was there. I made sure that Graham McTavish had lattes whenever he required them. Uh, and and these guys are sort of fresh off of CinemaCon. So how, how are you feeling? Uh, great. I mean, CinemaCon was wild. It was a lot of fun. I could tell you all sorts of stuff I'm not supposed to talk about on social media. What happens at Vegas CinemaCon? That's what I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> Must remain there. <laughs> well, let's start with this then. What What is this movie and how did you will it into existence? Uh, I guess I'll start. Um, actually, the, the concept for the film started, I was, was at a 4-H event. It doesn't get much more... Uh, montana than that i was at a 4-h event and absolutely yeah and i was i was talking to a rancher who was uh not a dutton and uh i was just looking at this guy's hands and i was like hey you know everything that this man's family has comes from that man's hands like it's really apparent just the calluses and you just you talk to the guy and you're like okay this guy's like a character and then i just started making a character out of him in my mind then I thought of his opposite, and then I stuck them in an op in a uh, impossible situation, and that's kind of what really birthed the whole thing. And together, you guys tried, you know, at, le at least one time before I came on board to get this thing off the ground, uh, but there were some obstacles in the way. Oh, sure. So the first time that we were going to uh, go for shooting this was uh, the summer of COVID, so we decided to push it. And then the next year we were also going to shoot it, but then um, due to an actor's obligation, we were not able to. <laughs> All right. And that, that leads nicely into the next question. Let's talk about the casting process. Uh, we obviously ended up with a better cast than our tiny budget deserved. How did that happen? <laughs> our casting director, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, Amazing woman. Yeah, Rick, uh, our casting director, Miss Ricky Masler, she, it was, it, it was just a series of everything happening the right way at the right time. And I remember she was rifling off a list of actors for, for the lead. And, um, and she says, I got some other ones, but you know, they're long shots. And one of them she mentions is Graham McTavish. And I said, the saint of killers. And she said, you know him well, <laughs> huh? And I said, yes. I said, if you will read the first 11 pages of the script, I will worship you as a goddess for the rest of my life, Ricky. And a um, week later, she sent me a text and said, I hope you're sitting down. Graham says he wants to do the movie. And that was it. And for, from there, we were able to That's get... That's crazy. Involved. Yeah, and from there, we were able to get a whole lot of other people. And so that big domino led to the other dominoes the other incredibly talented actors we were able to put in front of the camera on this movie. Yeah. And it was weird because we'd actually, the year before we had begun casting, right? So we actually had some roles cast. And so we had to mix that old cast in with new cast in where it would all fit and then hope the whole thing would come together. And so that's, that was the difficulty as well. So it's speaking of the cast, Montana itself plays a huge role. Uh, Eden, how did the shooting locations in the Flathead Valley affect the look and feel of the film? Oh my gosh, I think that just completely added a whole new element to it. Um, being born and raised here, I know a lot of the different areas and I know a lot of different people here and uh, found it pretty easy to find a spot that would be perfect for this movie. Because <laughs> everywhere you look, you're like, well, that could be the spot. That could be it. So, and then bringing Brandon in, it was really able to just get his vision brought to life. Yeah. And some absolutely breathtaking locations, most of which are like a 30 minute drive from Polson <laughs> Max. Yeah. <laughs> and it ended up saving, uh, saving us a ton of money in terms of location fees yes. for shooting. Yeah. Um, and they certainly jump off the screen. Um, 
how was the process of shooting this movie different than the shooting of Yellowstone and its dozens of spinoffs? <laughs> well, let me see. One episode of Yellowstone is about 20 times our entire budget. So that would be one way it's different. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> there's one. <laughs> there's one. Two, we had, you know, we had to use some economies, uh, you know, of, of just the indie filmmaking process. So, for example, you don't get 20 takes of anything. You get three to five if you're lucky. And if you get a good take, you take it. And that's it. We also ran two cameras at the same time. So we set almost everything up for two cameras. That way we could uh, collect more footage at one time. And it was also easier to cut between in dialogue and so forth. So wherever we could use two cameras, we also used two cameras. Um, and we had a much smaller crew, but our crew absolutely killed it. Like, the look of the film is unbelievable. You look at the film and you're like, oh yeah, that's a $20 million film, you know? And right. it's not nearly that much. So um, it was, it was, it was because the amazing people we had that made it so uh, amazing. Definitely. Eden, what advice would you give to aspiring filmmakers in Montana based on our experiences? <laughs> uh don't do it. <laughs> oh, come on. No, I'm kidding. I absolutely loved it. And I loved every part of it, the good, the bad, the, the, the stress, the everything. It was absolutely amazing experience. Um, but I guess it would probably be just ask for help that you don't yeah. have to do it all by yourself. So ask for help. Yeah. And you better love it. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You better love it. Yeah. This is definitely what's something you love. <laughs> you know it's it's definitely something that you don't do unless you love it because uh you know it, it's almost like pro sports right there's only gonna be a handful of people who are making the big money there's only gonna be a handful of people who are playing in the big leagues you know there's only a handful of people who are gonna be taking the the trophy home every year and so uh, you got to love it to do it. Absolutely. Um, all right. Give me one specific memory each that stands out to you from the filming process. We'll start by putting Eden on the spot. Oh, geez. Um, God, I think it's just kind of an over overall memory. And that was just being there to experience um, other people's reaction to my home you know, for them to see Montana in general, you know, a lot of these actors had never been here before. Some of the crew members hadn't even been up this area, even though they're from Montana. So it was just that pride that I felt a lot for having been where I'm at and where I'm from. Very cool. All right. You, Brandon. Uh, for me, it's actually probably the moment, you know, before I stepped on set, um, cause this is the biggest movie I've done so far. And so people are like, yeah, it's going to be the most stressful moment of your life. You're going to step out on set. Everybody's going to be running up to you, asking you questions and, and you got to get that first shot off. And, and so I, um, I remember very distinctly driving up, getting out of the car. There were like three people right away. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, <laughs> blue over there and we'll wait until we do the other one and i just got this sense of like absolute calm and i was like yeah this is my happy place this is where i'm supposed to be this feels good i like this yeah yeah let's keep doing this so yeah all right yeah I, that's I, pretty nice i do feel like we need a, a funny story though a funny story for me funny story i think i think a funny story from graham because uh, we have the scene where uh, it's in the it's in the movie, and it's Graham <laughs> walking away. And I, I I wish we could share the audio from it because in the in the scene there's nothing there like you, it's just music, but his mic was catching him talking and he is swearing up and down at Brandon saying all of these things because Brandon kept making him walk further and further and further. And it was toward nothing basically. Yeah. Towards nothing. Like he was walking into the abyss of, of Montana mountains. <laughs> and, and we could hear um, it on our headphones that, because we had the headphones yeah, on. We, we could hear what he was saying, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So every time With I see each that step, he knew he was just getting yeah, further, further away and would have to walk, walk right back to come back. <laughs> uh, yep. It's good. 
helping him get his steps in. Brandon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Every time I see that scene, it makes me laugh. <laughs> Very close to the beginning of the movie, so yes. oh, yeah. you guys won't have to wait long. Uh, the the upcoming screening at the Waypoint in Big Sky is this. It's part of this exclusive Montana preview that we we rolled out at select theaters. Um, how's the feedback been so far, and what is the next step? When can we expect a, a perfect Rotten Tomatoes score? Mm. <laughs> um. Well, I know I've been following a lot of uh, boards online and um, we've even started getting some reviews on our Facebook page, but it is being really well received and people are really enjoying it. I mean, there's been comments, everybody needs to watch this movie. Um, so I think that it is being really well, well received more than we could have hoped. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the whole purpose of this was once we get into distribution, we kind of lose con uh, full distribution. We kind of lose control of the film and we promised that it would be shown in theaters in Montana. So we wanted to make sure that we kept that promise and people have turned out for it, which has been great. So after this, um, after this little limited private Montana run, it, the next time it'll be shown will be at the opening night of Rocky Mountain NATO, which is the National Association of Theater Owners uh, event in Salt Lake City. And it'll be the opening night event for that. Um, and then a month later, it will be going into theaters nationwide. Outstanding. There we go. But Montana does deserve this preview because the, the money all came from private investors in Montana and grants uh, through the film commission uh and it was almost entirely a montana crew you had some montana actors in there and of course we are all montanans the three of us so we we did feel like this was the right decision to to do this in state and keep it uh where where it belongs to begin anyway heck yeah I, but i've only lived here 20 years i don't think i get to call myself a montanan yet <laughs> i think I, I i like temporary resident status is what i've got so far I think, uh, yeah. So I think I have to live here another 20 years before permanent resident. And then we work up to Montana at some point. Yeah. Until your visa expires. <laughs> I think as, I think as soon as you qualify for an in-state fisher, fisherman license, mm. you, know, mm. you call yourself a Montana. Okay, good. good. No? I, All right. I would love it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Which uh, upcoming Nova Vento projects are we allowed to discuss in public right now, guys? I think we should talk about Joe's project. Yes, but we just can't talk about the attachment yet. No, we can't, we can't talk, talk about who no. we're getting attached to that. But. Yeah. All right. That's fair. Okay. But so Joe, you should tell us about your story. I mean, we're, we're shooting a movie. It's a, we're shooting an edgy family comedy called two X. Uh, that is a reverse parent trap where a, a pair of siblings try to engineer a divorce between their parents so that they can double up on Christmas and birthday presents. And I'm excited about it. Yeah, no, it's a brilliant script. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. I think I'm excited about making a comedy in Montana. Yes. You know, we yes. can do things other than shoot westerns in this state, and and I'm prepared to to lay down that gauntlet. Let's do it. Let's yes. Do it. <laughs> and if uh, and if all the cards all right. fall the right way, we're going to have some great name, uh, great actors in that film too. Uh, and for sure, come and see us. Uh, we will all be at the Waypoint on April 26th. Uh, for our preview of Somewhere in Montana, and then it will play through May 2nd. So make sure you get out and see that. Before I let you go, guys, dumb game. Here we go. This is called <laughs> Somewhere in Montana is the name of our movie. The name of this game is Where in Montana is Carmen St. Ignatius? Tell me where in is Montana, Montana is Carmen St. Ignatius. <laughs> So you guys love to talk about places in Montana, right? Somewhere in Montana is the name of the movie. Uh, so I'm going to tell you where Carmen is, okay, in Montana. You got to guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give you some context clues. Ready? It starts off super easy. Carmen is at a national park. It's part of the Rocky Mountain region and is famously home to 7,000-year-old glaciers. If the glaciers moved any slower, Glacier scores... Park. Oh, all right. You didn't even let me get to my joke. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were supposed to like, okay. It's sorry. fine. Okay. You're not, okay. It's, start over. We're not start competing. Over. Start over. We're not start competing. Over. It's fine. The, the joke was if the glaciers moved any slower, Scorsese would turn their story into a movie. Oh, 
for the film friendly crowd, that one. Yeah. All right. Yes. Uh, here's the next one. Another layup. You'll get this one. Uh, nicknamed, okay. nicknamed the last best place. This city is the most populous in Montana. It is certainly not the best place, the last best place, but at least they have a Krispy Kreme. Where is Carmen? Billings. Carmen is in Billings. Very good. Eden. <laughs> yeah. right. I'm sorry, Billings. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. I don't I'm, have I'm trying, too many I, of these. Now I'm trying not to answer too quickly. <laughs> okay. It's fine. You don't have to compete. You're not jumping in. It's all right. All right. Next one. Nicknamed Electric okay. City. This Montana town was built around a massive hydroelectric dam. Legend has it there are mermaids, not at the dam, but at the weird tiki dive bar. Where is Carmen drinking a Rainier on draft? Great Falls. Great Falls. <laughs> yeah, she, there, <laughs> Carmen is in Great Falls. Good for her. You know, she's, she's finally kicking back. All right, uh, two more. Which I've never seen the mermaids. I've been to that place twice. Never seen a mermaid. Same. So. I, don't I feel like they don't swim often enough. It's it's very difficult to spot them. I also missed Piano Pat by just like a month. She died before Aww. I could get there. Very uh, sad. <laughs> the uh, the largest freshwater spring in the continental U.S. is located in this Montana town, nicknamed the Big Spring. Uh, it's the geographical center of the state, but the very bottom when it comes to entertainment. Carmen is super bored. Where is she? <laughs> <laughs> if she's super bored, I just want to say Butte, but I don't think that's the right answer. Oh, she could be bored uh, in a lot of places. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you know this one, Eden? No, I'm trying to think of other places that have. You guys spring. are so far I can't think west. Of the town, like biggest. <laughs> we've had to. Yeah, we've had to go here. Freshwater, like for for kids soccer. Oh. What is right in the middle of the state? There's not much else there, honestly. It is. Lewistown. That's oh, yes. where Carmen is. Okay. Oh, Lewistown. Yeah. That, they have a, yep. Well, it's, I mean, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> you can speak freely here. I can always edit things out. Uh, <laughs> they have a Pulson theater there. <laughs> Do they really? I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, it's been, it's been playing somewhere in yeah. Montana this week. Okay. Great brewery and a family dollar. What more do you need in a town, really? Right. Uh, <laughs> All right, last one. This city is the site of the original entrance to Yellowstone National Park. If Carmen stays very still and listens carefully, she can hear local musician John Mayer chewing edibles and saying vile, unspeakable things in his bedroom. Where is Carmen? <laughs> uh, Gardner? Gardner is correct. Very good. Yeah. Nice work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys crushed it. That was where in Montana is Carmen St. Ignatius. Tell me where in Montana, Montana is Carmen St. Ignatius. St. <laughs> Ignatius. Wow. That All was right. Awesome. Uh, like I said, dumb game. I apologize, but it's what we do on the podcast. Thank you so much, That's guys, amazing. for joining me. Brandon, get back on the road. Uh, and, and I will look forward to seeing you guys April 26th at the Waypoint. Awesome. Thank you. See you then.